it's been another week. I was like, oh, I was going to say two weeks, but I'm doing it weekly right now. So getting it up there. And then the girl time chat next time. So I'm going to do my dabble ganger. I'm Mary. In case you don't know, how are you doing, everybody, on this beautiful day? So far, a beautiful week. There was some rain coming in a little bit. So, not too bad, though. We had a beautiful week so far. And I think even tomorrow. Let me look at the weather real quick. I think tomorrow, too. Yet. And then Sunday, though, for Mother's Day, we're going to have a little bit of rain, supposedly. <laughs> daily, daily, daily. I have rain. Oh, to rain tomorrow, too. Oh. Rain tomorrow and Sunday for Mother's Day. But not 40% chance, so... Hmm. 5250, there you go. Anyways, let me see here. Oh, I gotta do my doppelganger thing, so I can do that. So I can see who's messaging or not and questions or commenting, I should say. I guess technically not messaging. So, and see who's all on. Well, there's a few people supposed to be coming, so there you go. I'm gonna wave. No one's here. Yep, but that's all right. We can get started. They can do hashtag replay and do their thing. So I want to um, say hello to everybody out there. Let's see, hello. And then my wave, my double wave. I like to do the water wave because I love the water. So, and I can't wait. I have to look up parasailing to go. Oh, beautiful parasailing. It's so relaxing. So, though, if you don't like heights, it's not for you. And you don't get wet. I thought maybe you would because on the water and all that, but mm -mm. I've been in, I did it twice so far. So this will be my third time in June. <sighs> it's a little expensive, but it's well worth it. Well worth it if you can do it. So I got my doppelganger going. There I am. And all that great stuff. So... Gonna get going here and get started. So I'm Mary. I think there's a few new people. So I'm Mary. I run this um, homeschool childcare kind of thing. I still have some childcare classes. I'm gonna be doing some homeschool classes. So if you're interested for your children, let me know in the fall. I'm gonna be talking about that in a couple months. Well, probably next um, in June, because the next one will be in June. It's gonna be about curriculum and classes. So I'm going to talk about um, a couple ideas I have for classes because I um, did, um, I ran a homeschool group, in case you didn't know, I ran a homeschool group in person a few years back for about seven years and I hired teachers, I did all kinds of great things to my church and then with that I also did some teaching so I have some classes there. So I hope everyone's doing great. Um, put your emojis down. How you doing? How your week was? If you loved or not, hey. Say hello when you hop on. So I know you're there. Let's see what I was going to do. Oh, I know. Emoji. Great week. I'm going to smile. So. All that great stuff. Let's see. Um, and thank you for coming and being here. And enjoy the process. And just. And to live to learn and learn to live. That's my philosophy in life. Um, get questions. Get questions. Ask questions. You may have some questions. Um, and get your answers, hopefully. And DM me if you want to. Or post them here. And as we go about homeschooling. This one's all about questions. Hi, Lisa. Hi, I see you watching. You got to... Um, Message me about when we're going to meet up next and we can talk about some homeschooling stuff in Florida, too. And go through all that. There's a great option of doing just portfolios. And you should know how to do that already. So that's awesome. So let's see. Well, I talked about me already. Oh, what's coming up? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what's coming up. Oh, I'm working on, I'm working on classes. So yay, yay, yay. I'm excited about that. I kind of mentioned that already. So I'm working on um, classes for you guys, for the children. So they'll be in person, some that are in this area. I know a few people. 
that one some and then also probably some online as well on zoom for those people a little bit further away so i haven't decided all that we'll work out schedules and timing and all that great stuff those kind of things and this week's been a busy week and coming up busy week with doctor's appointments and lab work Blah. so getting me all checked out um, i have several different health issues going on but pretty much under control and getting good reviews overall except really high cholesterol but i'm working on it so let me know how your week was and put your emoji down there do you have a great week or not and enjoy this beautiful sunny weather. I know you always have sunny weather and warm weather, you at least in Florida. Well, not, maybe not all sunny. I'm sure you get rainy days in there. But you got the warm weather. And we just had some nice warm weather up in the 70s for us. That's pretty warm for us right now. And sunny all week so far. So we're supposed to get rain, though, tomorrow. And on Sunday for Mother's Day. So, um... Oh, I'm working on all about homeschooling stuff, so the schedules um, and curriculum and my classes and things like that for you guys and see how that goes. So we'll be talking about those coming up. So the next one is on curriculum and the first week in the first Thursday in June, which I think is actually June 1st. I didn't put that down. And then we'll do two a month. On homeschooling one on the topic like curriculum or whatever it might be and or classes or homeschool groups um just kind of different things support and then some maybe behavior things or multi-age um, homeschooling we have some of those so if you multi-age homeschoolers let me know below and then we're going to do and then a q a um after that. So each month we'll have a full Q&A. So a little bit refresher on what we talked about. And then we're going to have that. And then the child care one, we're going to have that girl time chat, which I love. So, and everyone can join with that one too. It's about motivation and asking questions and, you know, keep it going for us because we need that that way. So those are What's oh, and then what's coming up is um, for child care teachers, we're having the Preparing Parents for Change. And that's May 25th. So that's 6 to 7.30 Central Standard Time. So that way. Oh, you do, Nicholas? Okay, we can talk about that. We're not going to do it right now maybe too much um, with schedules, but maybe a little bit. But multi-age children, because that can be a little bit... Um, Kind of hard, Nicole. So, hey, Nicole, how you doing? Let me know below. Okay, well, let me know, Lisa, when you're able to um, get up. So let's get started. All about that daily schedule and get it going right in those daily routines, hopefully going. So get your paper and pencils if you need. Also, though, I do have notes with my um, freebie. So if, stay along, you'll get a um, chance to get a freebie, which will have the daily schedules, a couple different ones, some samples, as well as um, some blank ones. And if you need help, not good at Word, or just want some help and better ideas, then we can um, book a call with me, and then we can go through it, and I can individualize the um, schedule for you, and then give you the document so then you can have it for yourself so are you ready raise your hands if you're ready 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 and you know it <laughs> and let's get going so first of all so it's benefits and there's a benefit for all of us for having a regular schedule and routine it really is it's less stress and stress can be a killer stress because, you know, now we know what we're going to do. And for the children, too. So this is, works for both. Usually if it works for the children, it works for the, us, too. It's usually, you know, sometimes they get more stressed out. But we still get stressed out. Tell me about it, right? Um, so all that. So we have, you know, those expectations and all that. So you have less um, stress because you know what's coming. You know what tomorrow's going and what you're doing and 
all those different things. Same with the children. They know what they're doing and what's going to happen. And, you know, that's great about those daily schedules is having that for them and posting it and different things. And it helps with better time management, especially if you do flexible schedule a little bit and add some, have some, you know, a little bit of free time in there so you can have time for doctor's appointments and those things that just happen to come up. So you get, and you get better sleep and you're happier because you're getting more done, right? And more sleep and all that. So then you're also healthier. So those are some great benefits so you, of keeping to a daily schedule as best as possible because we all know that we need to be flexible. Okay, well, I'm glad you're really good, Nicole. I just kind of looked in there. I'm not sure what you're good about, but it's always great. So, yay. Um, if you're great with the daily schedules and don't need any help, but maybe this will give you some different ideas and things like that um, to kind of up, update your schedule for yourself um, and your family. So um, here in Wisconsin, we need 875 hours. And I would think that would be the same in other states. I know um, some different ones because, you know, that would be a federal mandate. I mean, how many hours a year the school needs to, um, the children have to be in school. And you can just do it at home. You can do it online. You can do a mix and match like I did. We'll talk about that. Excuse me. And the subjects might be slightly different for different states but i'm oh excuse me <laughs> i'm sure they're really similar um if not some will be the definitely the same but um reading and language arts and they separate it in wisconsin so you have reading and language oh goodness i'll take a drink out my coffee for a sec mm. that's yummy I went and I was naughty. I went to Fiddleheads and got me some their decaf. I love. So reading, language arts, math, of course. And um, language arts is a vocabulary, writing skills, you know, those essays, finally when they get to, you know, paragraph writing, but those, that grammar and that kind of thing too. Reading, of course, is reading and learning to read and write, depending on the age of the children, all this, right? Mathematics, I do recommend textbooks. I'll talk a little bit more about subjects next time in curriculum and some different curriculum um, possibilities or choices. And there's plenty out there, so I'm sure I'll miss some, but just to give you an idea, you know, and then you can list yours and let us know what ones you um, love in that way and which ones you tried and they suck, <laughs> or at least for your children um, that way, because everyone's different, right? So math, um, I would recommend, though, for math, doing textbooks. But thanks to arts and different things, you can do, you know, like a workbook kind of thing if you want. But you can also do, if you have the younger ones, the cooking and things like that. And that still would be considered math. Um, it can also be considered health, too. Um, social studies. So that's geography, government, history, that kind of thing. You know, and usually you do a textbook for that, but not always. You can just do different things um, with that. I didn't always do a textbook, but I did for the U.S. history in high school and um, world history. Um, we did those and they were textbooks. But before, when he was in grade school, I did more of different workbooks and kind of things on online. And he studied different presidents and the timelines and what they all did. So he kind of, we kind of just made up our own kind of curriculum for um, social studies and geography and things like that. Until we got to high school, I was a little bit more strict because I wanted to make sure he had the basics for when he went off to college. So that's something I can help you with because I have a homeschooler and did several through um, high school and made up their transcripts for them and getting into different colleges. Um, science, of course, and I did not do a textbook with him until, and actually Tenny, I didn't do a textbook. We did online um, CD and then he, they had different, um, a textbook kind of in there. He read the stuff, things. But until he did that, we did 
um, different science experience, experiments, you know, and you can use gardening and cooking to cause and effect all those different things um, for science and health. We did cooking and gardening. So health, I never did a textbook for. We had this fun. We did a variety of different things with cooking. And we also brought it in with social um, sociology and um, gov um, geography, where we talked about what different things um, different cultures ate. And we even made some of it. So we did cooking with it. We did herbs with it. We did, you know, geography with it, things like that. So it was kind of fun. So we did that for our health mostly. And even in high school, we didn't do a specific health textbook, that kind of thing, which I assume there is. I guess there is. Also, um, we did um, health can also be like exercise and things. So we did an exercise kind of things. We also did outside shoveling the snow and gardening and mowing my lawn. Then I did have a lawn. Um, okay. Oh, hi, um, Michelle. How you doing? Post questions below. Um, if you missed a few minutes, uh, just got started a few minutes ago. So we're just starting um, here. And then you can do add other classes like the arts and things like that if you want to. Um, music, obviously, you know, um, my son loved drawing and that kind of things. And then he did a little bit of painting and things like that. Some do the, you know, and he also did um, learn the guitar. I almost forgot, but he did the guitar, you know, so he did different lessons as well. And you can, you know, pick and choose and add that. And just kind of different fun things depending on what you what your family is into if you're into the gardening thing or you know and you can do nature you can do arts in nature which i love combining those two together and so did my son he he did this beautiful thing because he went to uw peck school of the arts for a senior year in high school and he took some art classes and he did a beautiful drawing of him of himself sitting in this beautiful in our um, Cambridge woods. So it was really kind of cool. So those kind of things. Now the time, your time for homeschooling and school year. You pick the days, nights, weekends, you know, if you can do all year, including summer or mix, you know, to get your 875 hours. And one secret with that, one secret, listen close if you don't know. With ours and I can, depending on the other ones as much, but I know in Wisconsin and a few others, it's 875 hours, but they don't have to be all, all the, their subjects. So you can include art, you can include that foreign language. And some may have foreign language as part of their um, requirements. We did not, but I added it because college would like to have it. So he did have um, the foreign language as well. So that can be included. You have to do those other subjects. But there's no time requirement, so you can do like I did that experiments once a week, or you know social studies that way or health um, that way. It's just got to be kind of progressive, and with the age of the child, it becomes naturally progressive and what they need to do and learn. So that's the secret of that. So you can add different subjects. Mainly, I would think it would be the foreign language of some sorts and the arts. You know, whether that's music or drawing or painting, things like that. And any others, or religion. My sister did religion. Uh, I'm not even thinking. I did some religion. My mom did some with my our son. So, and different, um, if you want, you can include a religion. My sister included the um, converse, um, confirmation classes as part of her curriculum. Okay. So... You know, those kind of things. So that's kind of that great thing with the schedule. And there's so many different ways to do your schedule. I mean, and just, you know, adding and changing. You can do mornings, afternoons. But part of it is thinking when you first do it, it's like ugh, getting it all in. You know, you have your schedules, your subjects, you know. And, you know, it depends if you have to work or not. And if you work at home or if. You know, you're just a homeschooling mom completely, 
dedicated to your children. And you might be, especially if you have several children. Um, one of my nieces and nephews, they have five children. The other one has like six or seven. And so she just stays home and just makes it because it's kind of hard to do a little bit with all those different multi-age groups too. Because you need, you know, making sure they get the right math levels and things like that and where they're going. So all those different things. And, you know, children need help with the math and then this one needs help with, you know, reading and so on and so forth. And getting those extracurricular activities like a, um, a homeschool group for socialization, those field trips. We have Discovery World here that does homeschool days and the Milwaukee Public Museum did. I'm not sure, I, but I'll probably look into it when we do a field trip um, thing just to see if they're doing them again or not. And Linden Gardens, if you love art and nature, are wonderful. Now, most of these are just in Milwaukee area, but I'll look at some different ones just to give you some ideas. But you know, you know, like the, your zoo in your area and and check them out, look at Google search and, you know, put in their search homeschool and see if they have homeschool days and things like that in your area. And then you have those different things. So you have field trips, things like that. And you can make up your own too. I mean, you don't have to do specific things like that. You can, a field trip can be, you know, going to the park and that kind of socialization. And then you can, you know, talk about the bugs or different things or the leaves or the trees or the nature or the season, you know, there's all those different things that it can go with, with your science or your history or just different things. So and then you can, you know, figure out those music and dance and sports. I forgot about sports, but um, you can do the um, sports too. We do have some different sports for homeschoolers in Wisconsin. And most, I would think, do, you know, things like that. So if you're into sports, we weren't into sports. We didn't do it, but we had a few homeschoolers in our group that did um, the homeschool, those kind of things. So the day, you know, I'm talking about this because... It just reminds me of the child care kind of thing. So I just brought, think I'd bring it up a little bit. Is, oops, is um, that your activity level for your day, you know, and fitting those subjects in, at, you know, which ones should be, you know, at what time. Because sometimes, especially if they don't like math, you know, that might be something that you might want to do first. And you can make it more, activity oriented and some um, homeschooling tech curriculums do have, especially for the younger ages up to third grade or sometimes even fourth, like act, math actual activities. And they even have these um, kits and things like Saxon Math does. And I think a few others, I use Saxon Math. And, but other ones, and you can have kits and they can do activities. So it, it's engaging. And then they do have the, the um, workbooks so that, you know, they, write down the answers to questions and work them out as well. But they have that to help them to learn. See, depending, it can be their go with their interests and then the activity level. Like, is there activities to go with it? Like reading is more quiet. So maybe that's something and you're not really being active with the reading, right? So you might want to have that, you know, maybe just before lunch or just after lunch. Or, you know, if your children are that young where they still might take a nap time, then maybe just after before, things like that. Or before bed, you can switch it up and have it before bed. But they need to read a half an hour, hour, however you want to do it, length of time before bed and read, um, read then. And you can read to them some, and then they can read back to you, those kind of things, obviously. Um, so just kind of those um, activity times, what's the best time in their favorite subjects, you know, you. You can do their favorite subjects a bit later in day, maybe, because they really like it. So they'll still stay attentive where things that they don't like, maybe you might want to do in the beginning so that they are attentive, you know, because they're just getting up. <laughs> so it's kind of thinking of what may work that way. Plus, with the multi-age groups, you might need to flip-flop. I'll talk about that in a minute. So... We just need to be always, you know, age appropriate. So, you know, the time frame of how long you have each class might be different for the different children that you have. For the younger age group, you might want to keep them shorter. 
and maybe split up the math or, you know, the activity, and then you might want to do the lesson a little bit later, you know, where they actually write down their answers and things like that, the workbook kind of thing. So you kind of work it out, you know, kind of figure it out with your children a little bit, and you might need to practice, you know, try a schedule and give it a couple weeks. I would say at least two to three weeks. I mean, unless it's really bad and they're like, but... I will give it two to three weeks to, to get it going, you know, especially if you're new to homeschooling and give it a try before you switch it up too much, you know, that way. But you can, you can switch up whenever you want. It's your homeschool. You can do it whenever you think is appropriate for your children and or you. I mean, especially if like your schedule changes or you have appointments and things like that for the doctor or all those different things that may come up. You can switch it around, right? Um, so that way. So activity. So you might want to start in the mornings, higher activity engaging or out some outside activity time or gardening, you know, those kind of things. Then medium, maybe math or the arts. And then low, you, you know, you could do that more reading and writing and more quieter ones. Or, you know, it could be even the science. And if they're a little bit older math, you know, those kind of things. So there's kind of different reasons to do subjects at different times. And one for the multi-age is like if you have one child that really loves math and you don't have to worry about helping that child with math. But another one, you need to help that child with math. Well, you might want to flip-flop that one child does math at a different time than that other child's. Or you could do it together so they can help each other out. So it just depends on your children, but then you got to be careful. Are they going to be getting their work done or just helping that other child, you know, and that's not a necessarily bad thing, but you got to plan those things and kind of think about that. And so that's what my um, niece does with her five children. They, they flip flop for their children that way. So with their subjects so that, when one is doing the math and really good at the other one isn't she's doing something else and then if she needs help with you know maybe the science then you can help with the science and then they can do that those kind of things so that's kind of how you can help you know doing the multi-age different um things going on so you can write up different schedules so they each have their own schedule if you need to and put their name on it you know so that they know what they're doing and that's always good to do. Mm. Oh, okay. It's 6.30 already. Wow. See, all right. Let's go. One big tip is don't make it hard on yourself. Start with what you do know, do know and do already. Get your children's input and try out your schedule. And you can always revise it, as I said. So you can always do that. And now the starting point of the schedule is just... Writing down all the subjects you need for your estate and just what ones you need. And then add the ones that you want to add, like the art or music or whatever it might be that you want to add. And then if you're going to take any in-person or online classes for that child, you know, you'll have to schedule in for that. Some are self-paced. I did a couple of ones that were self-paced for my son. I did a variety online. Not right away, not the first but the first year, I, I did in person already. But um, later on, like the second or third year, I started when he was in fifth grade, not to confuse you. So he's a little bit older. And he, we did some online and there was some self-paced. So then he, you could just put it, plug it in anywhere you want, that subject. And then he just had to go online and do the material. Those kind of things. Or you do like a CD program. I have the Switched On Schoolhouse we did and for a science. And you could just go on there, obviously, and do it any time. And then, of course, with the multi-age, depending on how many laptops you can afford and to do, you might have to share one or two different things like that. I should ask my niece how many they have or not and how they work it. Because I know they do some online. But anyways, so you write down all your subjects. Give them each at least one hour. Now you can give them more and kind of think, but you can kind of just start playing with it that way. And then you might need to rotate it different for, you know, 
making a different schedule for each one so that, as I said, one doing math and one doing the um, language arts at different times. You know, the, they might need more help with grammar and things like that. And sometimes you can do things like that together, you know, and do a lesson on that together. And there are different types of weekly schedules. There's the traditional hourly one, which I started out with. I did that, the traditional hour. You know, everything was about an hour long. And so he did pretty much everything almost every day, except for Thursdays. He always had off the homeschool, um, my group. And then as well as then he, before I started it, he went to homeschool in person classes and he took um, creative writing and art. And so he did that. And then he did some different things, a couple different things and field trips and all that. So you have the traditional hourly. And then you can have the um, weekly with one or two subjects um, a day. And that's what my son actually did. So I didn't, like, give him choices. He got a little bit older and got used to it. He's like, can I do, I just want to get all my math done all at once. And I want to get this, you know, I just want to do it. So I'm like, okay. And he loved it. And he did it. So he did all his math. He had it, and we separated it out, like, all right, the book has got 30 chapters or lessons. So then we separate out how many weeks we have. And then he had to do that many lessons, you know, for that week. So then he had to do them all in one day. And then I usually ask him to do that one first so then I can correct it. Because then we had, like, Friday was a half day. But if he needed to correct his homework, like his math or science or different things, then he had that time to correct it before he went into the next week and or to do extra homework or do his writing or different things like that. So we had it all done in like three days because there's six subjects. So he did, you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon each, those kind of things. Um, so you can do that. And you can do pick and choose, you know. Um, if they want to do math today, they can just pick it and check it off. And they did the, the math for the day. So things like that. So kind of a, a check, a check um, mark for um, what they did for the day. Then they can put it in and what they want to do. Oh, hi, Tina. We do eight days A and B. Oh, okay, there you go. You can do that too. You can have that you don't have the one, but you can have um, day A and B, and then you can rotate it that way. So then they have two days listed, so they know, okay, today's A and then B and then A and then B and all that. We kind of had that in my traditional high school. We had A, B, C, D, and then we had once a month a U day, which was a makeup day. So you could have to go, if the teacher requested you, you had to go in, or you had it free, you know, or you could just do stuff at home if you still want to, you know catch up on projects and writing and whatnot. So you can do your schedule several different ways as, you know, as you want that way. And you can split it, you know, mornings and then you can do some on the weekend if you want to, but then you can always do like the include, I did like the chores, things like that, different things like that for the um, health. Not that we need a specific amount of time for that, but... I just kind of included in with it just that way. And then cooking too, like helping with the meals and things like that. Well, that can be math or science or health or all combination of it, right? Depending what you're concentrating more on those ways. So I always included my, our lunch time and or dinner time as that, depending on how much he helped with it. Some days he did more and he needed to um, get some more work done. So he didn't help as much. And then other days he would. And some days he got to pick, you know, some days he picked and choose what we made and things like that. He, I even did, we did one project where he picked a vacation spot in near the Wisconsin area and what we all did. So we went for a long weekend and he picked the hotel. He picked what we're all going to do in the city and all those kind of things. So it was kind of fun. And then also he did um, some menus. He picked and did some menus for us. So for a couple of weeks here and there. And then we went grocery shopping. We did a budget kind of thing. So all those different things. It was kind of great. So those all different kind of things that you can just kind of add to it. 
Like I did a budget class for the homeschool group and a Microsoft Suite class, a goals class, a Microsoft Suite class, a creative writing class, um, art history, and um, what else? Something else with arts. And a couple other ones. I forget exactly. So I did a couple different things. And then once you get your schedule set, your starting point of your schedule, well, now have that conversation with your um, children. Now, some might be too little to understand at first, and they may, you know, but if you have a little bit older children and things like that, talk to them. And or if, not necessarily ask them the questions, but just let them know what's going on and this is what your schedule is. And just so they have that idea of what's going to be coming so they know and are prepared. Okay, this is how it's going to work. And this is how it's going to be this year. This is what we're doing. Those kind of things. And just listen to, you know, if they have any questions or things. Some maybe come up and you didn't even think about it. <laughs> you know, things like that. And you can make it adjustable and have some extra free time in there too. You know, always plan for some extra free time in different things. That's why I usually had like a day and a half, roughly. And that way, if we had to make an appointment, our Friday would end up be on a Tuesday so we can do appointments and he didn't have much of his free time because we had to go to doctor's appointments or whatever it might be. Just doing things that crop up, right? And then hopefully you can fudge in some free time or class time for you. You know, those kind of things. Thank you. But let's see. Um, consistency in your schedules. You need to be consistent. And that's so important because as we went back to the benefits, they love that consistency and know what's happening next. That helps them to feel comfortable and to know what's going on, what's going to happen next, you know, and having it posted for them. So start and end times need to be always the same. Now, end times, usually you can be a little bit flux, but you really need to have the start time. But they could say, well, you know, unless if you get things done earlier, you can have a little bit earlier, but you don't want them to be rushing. But, you know, those kind of things. So I had our end time was usually around three o'clock. And we say around nine ish, depending. Eight thirty-nine. Sometimes nine thirty to end. <laughs> and those kind of things. He was a little bit of a night owl like his father. So he actually didn't mind working a little bit later that way. So depending on your children and how they're what they're used to. Those kind of things. And then the days need to be consistent. Even if you have different A B days or rotate you know um different days like you have tuesday thursday days and monday wednesday friday days that are the same different things like that just make sure that then they're consistent and they know what they are and then as they get older you can have them do a check thing or things like that once they get used to homeschooling and a little bit older and they can really have that um, self-discipline to really get their things done, then you can do that, a, more of a checklist. I wouldn't start that way with them. I mean, unless you want to do it for yourself, but I would start with specifics, um, a schedule and curriculum, what they're doing that time. And then post it. Make sure that they know in the classroom or if you have like, I did it in our dining room, their table, and I had a couple of different shelves out there, things like that. So I had our dining room was where we had a homeschool area for us. You know, if you have a big enough that or a play area or you have big enough um, bedrooms kind of things so you can have, you know, a little bit of an office space for them. Not that they have to sit at the desk all the time, but sometimes they'll need that, you know, for a laptop or just kind of sitting and doing some workbook things. But then of course they should have some activities and things like that to go on throughout the day and with different activities with different subjects but have it posted for them and then just be consistent with the seasons like if for summer what i did was i he picked he had two subjects it was a little older so i did um i picked one the one i needed either math it was usually either math or um the um foreign language 
depending on that. And sometimes it was math for a little bit because he had to finish his book because that wasn't his favorite subject either. And then I always wanted to have a little bit of the foreign language, but we didn't start foreign language right away. That was in high school. So, and then he could pick the other subject, but it couldn't be art. He could always do art because he loved arts and drawing and painting. So that was just an extracurricular kind of thing during the summer, which he always picked. So <laughs> those kind of things. So he had to do math usually. So he finished up and then he got a head start on the next year usually. Um, and it was like a little a day. I mean, it wasn't a lot. And sometimes it was like every other day or, you know, things. So we had a lot of fun things in there and vacation times and things like that. But he still had a little bit of a schedule going. And so he did usually math for him. For you, it might be science or it might be vocabulary, you know, that way. And then his favorite subject, which was also then writing. He loved writing. He didn't care to read as much, but he loved writing to begin with. Now he is an avid reader. In his junior, senior year in high school, he became, he just, he just loves reading now. So he just, he reads all the time. Far as I know, he still reads all the time um, that way. But see, so you can do it that way. You can you can pick and choose how you want to do it, you know. But I would keep this consi consistency of starting time or get up time. And if you want to be a little bit lax in the summer, that's okay that way for starting. But I wouldn't probably no more than an hour because that way it'll be almost too hard to get back into that routine and things like that. And what you might want to think too is then can you start that hour later for in the fall? And go that, you know, maybe a little bit later or things like that. Or you find out that the schedule, well, they get it all done in this time frame. So you can make a shorter day, you know, things like that. So once you get used to it and how you, the, your children kind of learn or and different things like that and get their work done and concentrate or not or needs more breaks or not, things like that, then you can kind of work it out. But the biggest thing about consisting is it, the start time and just have a little bit of work for them so they get used to doing that work and those um, workbooks and, you know, different activities with their work. So they have that consistency throughout the summer for a little bit. That way, that way it'll be easier for you to get back into that school year again. Depend how you do it. And then once they have it and done it for a while, you can get their input. How do you want to do it this year? You know, and you can have the schedule made, have that talk, you know, and see what they think. And then within it all, of course, I've been talking about the whole time is a flexibility, right? Oh, okay. Any questions so far? I guess I should ask and how's it going? Questions um, that way? Post below, let me know, or just, it's going great. You love it so far. You loving the great ideas, different things um, that you didn't think about or new because you're new to being to homeschooling. I don't know some of you. I know that, Tina, you've been doing it now for this year as your first year of homeschooling. I don't know about you, Nicole. I think you might have been doing it for a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I see a question just popped up. All right, Nicole. Um, do you think it's a good idea to begin with work they know how to do? It can be. I mean, that's really up to your child because I would think it can be really great because then it gets them started in, in a positive mode to continue, you know, for the, you know, the next things that they have to do that they're not too great, great with. But it might be a good end of the day, depending on your child's personality. So it's something that you can um, try out. Because you might want to get, you know, those not so fun subjects. That's me, my personality. My son's the exact opposite. He always picked his favorites. Except I made sure he did math first, because that wasn't his favorite, but he had to do math first. Just so that I had time to correct it if he needed more help with that. And then we would do an extra math session together. But other than that, he picked it. He always picked his favorites. So your son or child might be 
when to do it that way. So you can try it. Give it a couple weeks, three or four weeks, and see it. Maybe even start with the summertime. You can do that for the summertime. And, you know, have like me. I don't know if you normally do it during the summer, but you can do it possibly during the summertime and try it with this favorite subject first. And then, okay, you need to do this. Because I always had, as I said, always one that he needed a little extra help with to make sure he didn't lose that information and can keep up with it. And sometimes he had to finish his math. So um, anyways, so those kind of things. So I would maybe just try it out for the summer. Just try it out, you know, if you do a summer schedule. If you don't, then just in the fall. And I don't know how old your child is if if um, that, because sometimes this personality, the younger ones, I think it might be better for them to get into the school mode to have something they really like. And then, okay, then it's not so bad when, you know, okay, we have to sit and do this science or whatever it might be that this isn't their favorite subject kind of thing, those kind of things. But I would definitely give it a shot. I don't think it's a bad thing to do. I mean, e None of it's really bad. It just depends on how your child children work, you know, and their personality and things like that. As I said, they might, like me, want to get it all done, the crap, and then they have fun in the afternoon and before they, you know, are done. Those kind of things. So it's um, that way. So I, my son has done it both ways. I just, as I said, make sure he did the math. math. I hope that helped, Nicole. Yeah, oh, okay, I didn't know. I just, I noticed it popped up as I was babbling about answering. I get that way sometimes. I'm repeating myself, so I'm sorry if I did. Um, yeah, like when you start the day, okay. Yeah, when you start the day, that's what I was talking about. At least I think I was. So when you start your day, because obviously you start your day with breakfast and should have like a discussion time, like what you're going to do that day. You know, or that week, depending, you know, if there's something different going on. I always had a discussion with my son because it's so important, those conversations. And that's what's so great about it, being able to homeschool is having those conversations. Even the real little ones, you know, kind of just planning and let them them know what's going on. But, yeah, the start of the day after breakfast, they can, well, let's get to go to math because then maybe they won't want to do it. But then now, oh, math, I love it, you know. I mean, I loved math. So my son was very opposite of me that way. I did like the arts too, but we didn't have that much in school. I went to private, very small Catholic schools. So we didn't really get to do much arts, but that way. And so I was going to say, so, you know, the, that way. So it might be kind of fun to start with something that they really like. And that way it'll get them motivated to get going, you know. Especially, I think, more the younger ones. But my... My my son was that way. He just wanted to have all the, you know, fun stuff first. Um, that way. Okay. What was I saying? Okay, summer. Cool. Well, I'm glad I helped. Yeah, I don't know if you normally do the summer, you know, how you do your summer. I don't know if this is your first summer or you've been doing it for a little bit or not, um, Nicole. But that's my recommendation. I mean, but... And you can do more than two subjects, but he did two. Plus, he always did arts, you know, because he loved it. So he did drawings and different things like that all the time and practiced his drawing and all that because he just loved it so much. And he did some painting, too. And I did some with him, too, because it was kind of fun. I did more of the watercolors and just kind of pretty muted colors together, not really making anything specific, unlike him. But he was very good at it. Oh. I don't know if I have any of his artwork, but I have to. Maybe I should post some. So, um, on to flexibility, real quick. So, you know, like that your child's sick or the doctor's appointments, all those different things that come up, you know. Or you have to go grocery shopping, there's nothing left for dinner. Oh, no. <laughs> right? And now you got to take another trip to the grocery store. But you can make that part of your curriculum because that can be budgeting, you know. Oh, you only allotted, you know. $2. I mean, I do that sometimes with my son. $2. What would you want to buy? I mean, that was a while ago, but it was still, you know, things like that. So you can, you know, make it that way. Or what vegetables do you want? Or pick all the, um, pick a green vegetable or a red vegetable, you know, things like that. So you can have them help you and 
they're learning, you know, those kind of things. Or if they're a little bit older, you know, they can um, pick one thing to make a week, something like that, and then you, they'll have to make their groceries, what they need for that, you know, all the different um, ingredients and check to see if you have it at home or not, and then what you need to get at the store, like if it's flour or all that, you have that at home already, so now it doesn't need to get that, but, you know, those kind of things. So you can have fun with it, too. Um, you know, and how does that get figured into your day? You know, those kind of things. That's why I have those gaps in there a little bit and having a day or two half days kind of things. So then you can be lucky enough and he can be lucky enough that he's got his work done. You had nothing happen that week and no doctor's appointments, no whatever. And now he, he's got some extra free time and some fun time. And then most of the time that doesn't happen too much, but... You can, right? That's why you got to plug some of that in and just get all your subjects in there. Um, okay, so just plan for it and relax a little bit and it's going to all work out. Eventually, it's all going to work out because you can just have it like, like I do with math. I mean, I had a kind of schedule like I looked at it ahead of time in the textbook. Okay, how many... Lessons he had to get done in a week. And I knew that I was going to have him during the summer. So I always did one less. So he could finish during the summer. But he could also get extra and go ahead. And it made him feel good when he did and was able to do extra that week. And so then he finished whatever during the summer. Because he had to finish it during the summer, whatever was left. And he knew that, so he was prepared to do that. So those kind of things. But just, you know, relax. And just see it with science. You don't need to do the full textbook. I mean, except for in high school, in grade school, I mean, as I said, for science, I didn't do that at all. I didn't do any textbooks. But if you want to, not saying that you shouldn't, or should, or you could do workbooks, however you want to do it. The only one I do highly recommend is math, so they have all those different things going on. Um, for them because of progression, you know, with the adding, subtracting, and multiplication, and fractions, and all that stuff. So they have that all done, and things like that. So you just need, you know, a positive attitude, the right disposition, and just some good mindset and motivation. And maybe that motivation is getting that, all the greats, getting that first awesome subject in and start the day with. So you can have the favorite one and then the second favorite one at the end of the day, maybe. So you have something, you know, to look forward to towards the end of the day. So that would be an idea, too. And then having some not-so-fun ones in between there, depending on what he does or doesn't like. And maybe, you know, the only one that my son really didn't like was the math. He loved reading and writing and um, even geography and history. It wasn't his favorite, but he, he liked it, all right, looking up different things and finding stuff. So he liked it. So, any questions more, um, let me know. Oh, looks like there's only one left, so I'm not sure who you are. So, anything else, comments, the, your biggest aha moment from the um, all the information you got today? Any big ahas or even um, big questions or some ideas for another um, live homeschool event? Things like that. So, curriculum's coming up. And then I forget, I did have an idea. I had to look back and think of another one um, and different activities. So I think I do that. Oh, and field trips. I'm going to do one on field trips. So I'll do some general field trips and I'll try to figure out. There's some online field trips that are really kind of cool too. So you can go online and, and get a virtual tour of different things. So that'd be cool. So what's next? So picking out your curriculum is next. So that's what I'm going to talk about that. Um, setting up your home if you haven't already and maybe reevaluating where things are in your home if you already started. Um, you already kind of worked on your daily schedule, so maybe with a curriculum and to how things work, you might want to kind of update it and kind of change it. Um, and getting all your school materials, of course, you know, those extra notebooks, um, art supplies, whatever it might be. 
and get some support from an in person, not even just for me, but you know, other homeschool groups, other Facebook groups, all those different things. Um, especially in person, it's always nice to have those kind of things. And if you're in the Milwaukee area, you can come for us and just kind of figure it out, you know, looking at the curriculum and all those different things. It isn't easy. It's simply um, fun, I mean, in a sense, but it's like, it's so, you get so many choices, it's almost overwhelming, especially the curriculum. When you start looking into that, you're like, whoa, pick one <laughs> or two or three, because I'm going to talk about the different styles of homeschooling um, with the curriculum that way. And if you need to think twice and you've got your choice, that's okay. You know, pick and choose and try it. The biggest thing is just trying it out, seeing if it works, evaluate it, and then guess what? Update it, change it. As I said, give two to three weeks, depending on what it is and how bad it is. But in the day, just look over your accomplishments, what you did that day, your accomplishments, and feel good about those. And be compassionate to yourself. Because if you had a crappy day, that happens. You know, and it's okay. Well, next day, tomorrow will be better. And even talk to the kids at dinner time. You know, what can we do better? You know, how can I help you better? How do you need more support? How can you support me? How can we make this work? Because those chores and all those things that children do together can be part of their homeschool day. So take advantage of that. So emoji time. Let me know how you, you liked it. Oops. Oh, that was passed. Okay. I was like, no one else coming. Okay. So um, updates. Well, I talked about that. The curriculum's next with act some activities and things. Um, and a Q&A session. And then the upcoming classes, preparing parents that change. Let me know below if you're interested. Um, that's May 25th. And your freebie, if you want. Is a homeschool schedule. So you have those, you have a couple samples and a couple blank ones so you can fill in your own, print out, fill in your own or do there however good you are with um, Word documents or not. And raise your hand, you know, and or put it, um, put in notes, um, there you go, put a notes emoji down there for the homeschool schedule if you want that and then you can give me a call i put i'll put the calendar in there so if you want a call just to kind of help you um through with some homeschooling ideas whether it's schedules or other things then let me know and then we can make a schedule together if you want to as well and update it and then i'll send it off to you as i said that way and just dm me and let me know um if you want the calendar or just put notes below, put that emoji below, and we can um, get you going. And then you can have that and have, and I'll post my link so you can get a free, a free um, consult on schedules to help you out. So there you go. I think I'm done. Oh my gosh, almost an hour. I can't believe it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize I look at the time now. Anyways, I know I, I plant too much in these, so I got to stop doing that. Anyways, yay. Oh, I made a happy face. I don't know when I made a happy face. But anyways, um, have a great evening. Enjoy the sunshine after today. I'm going to go and look, look for bunnies of my hobby because that's what I love to do on our walk. So we're going to go for a walk and enjoy it. And I will see you in... Well, next week, if you want to come for the Girl Come Chat with just motivation, fun topic. And so that should end more on time. So anyways, chat later. And don't forget to put notes emoji down or click on the calendar and we can get you going on homeschooling schedules. Talk to you later. Bye.